In this session of Look at the Book, we're going to focus on 2 Timothy 2, 24-26, which in my experience over the last 30 plus years has been one of the most important texts in helping me understand the relationship between the sovereignty of God in the transformation of people's lives out of Uh, the deadness and blindness of unbelief into a living, vital, loving relationship with God, the sovereignty of God on the one hand, and my responsibility as a pastor, as a father, as a teacher, as a friend, or your responsibility on the other hand. And no text that I can think of right now has put together these two more illumine with more illumination than this one. So, Father, I pray that you would help us to see your sovereignty here and to see our responsibility here and to see how the two fit together here and that we would draw out what's really here and not impose upon this text any alien theology or alien philosophy from our own experience, but get what you really have for us here. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thought at the beginning that perhaps I could do this in one uh, look at the book session, but it's going to take two, and let me read the whole thing, and we'll look at the second half first, and then take another session on the first half. The Lord's servant, so that's me, that's you, must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. And then comes this crucial section on the sovereign work of God in changing people. God may perhaps grant them repentance. So the granting of repentance is by God, leading to, so when this happens, It leads to a knowledge of the truth. And they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. So we're meeting people here who do not have a knowledge of the truth, they are captured by the devil, and they have lost their senses. So they need to come to their senses. They are unrepentant. And all that needs to be turned around. And how does it get turned around? God grants repentance. And repentance, of course, metanoia, is a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of soul. It's a, it's a deep inner change that leads to a knowledge of the truth. Now, there's lots of knowledge of the truth that requires no repentance to have, right? The devil has lots of knowledge of the truth. The the demons, when they looked at Jesus, said, we know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. So they had knowledge. But they didn't have repentance, and therefore their knowledge was not a knowledge of the truth as it is. They didn't see the holiness of Jesus as beautiful and compelling and infinitely valuable and desirable and satisfying. They didn't see it. They didn't have a knowledge of it for what it is. So there is a kind of knowing that unbelievers and the unrepentant have. But the kind of knowing that leads to a freedom from the devil and that leads to a a true relationship that saves is rooted in repentance. So God changes us, brings us to a turning of soul and mind, which then leads to a sight of the truth for what it really is. Now, and is not so that here. (laughs) It doesn't say he brings them to repentance 
leading to a knowledge of the truth so that they may come to their senses or leading to a coming to, of their senses. So we need to ask, how does the coming to their senses, waking up from the stupor, the drunkenness, and the blindness that they were in relate to repentance, and how does escape from the snare of the devil relate to a knowledge of the truth? And my suggestion is this, if this doesn't make sense, that, that they correspond like this. Coming to their senses corresponds to repentance, and escaping from the snare of the devil corresponds to a knowledge of the truth. And here's, here's why I think that. If they've lost their senses, then deep down there's a, a problem of, of perception. There's a, a, a drunkenness, a deadness, a stupor of soul that is keeping them from this knowledge, keeping them from this escape, and that needs to change. And so God does this repentance, and he does this, which I think are virtually the same. So repentance is a change of heart which can be described on the analogy of, of drunkenness getting sober. The drunks wake up and they're no long, they don't longer see the world uh, upside down and swirling and making no sense and keeping them from uh, safety and getting lost and tripping over things. So I think this coming to their senses and repentance are parallel. And then escaping from the snare of the devil is the same as coming to a knowledge of the truth. Why? Because the way the devil snares us is not by snaring our hands, right? He doesn't bind our hands behind our backs so that we say, oh, I'd love to do right, I'd love to do right, but my hands are bound by the devil and I can't do right. That's not, exo- that's not at all the way he snares us. We don't love to do right when we're in the snare of the devil. We hate to do right. He, this, the way the, sn- the devil snares us is by deception. He is a liar from the beginning. He deceives people. He deceived Adam and Eve. He tried to deceive Jesus. He is a deceiver and a liar. And so the way he holds us in in captivity here is by blinding us. So the coming to our senses leads to the escape from the snare because it leads to a knowledge of the truth for what it really is. So that's why I think this escape from the snare of the devil is parallel to a knowledge of, of the truth. So let's maybe put them together like this. So there's one bundle and like this. So there's another bundle and they parallel each other. So repentance is a deep soul change that leads to a true knowledge of what is true. And that's the same as coming to our senses, sobering up, becoming uh, sightful instead of blind, sightless, so that we then escape from the deception of the devil after being captured by him. And all of that, it says, is the gift of God. So let's sum it up like this. What was our condition? We were uh, snared by Satan. That is, we had lost our senses. We were blind in a stupor. And what had to happen? God granted repentance and he granted that we come to our senses. So God gives repentance. He gives um, sense, reason. He opens us to see what's really there, and that leads to a knowledge of what truth really is, how valuable it is, how precious it is, which is an escape from Satan. And we are then free. Free from the captivity to do his will and for God's will. It is a glorious deliverance and it is all of God. 
which raises this question then. If God is so decisive in granting the change that helps us to know, enables us to know, causes us to know the truth and gain our senses and escape from the devil so that we can do God's will, what's our role? Is there any place for a human agent in uh, bringing any of this about? And the answer is given right here, and we'll come back with a glorious answer, yes, and we need to see what that is.